Felicitas Bogen and Tega Angel. Deca Felicitas was my friend. She was a quiet person. Not just any kind of friend, she was a very loyal friend. She's always there in her clinical postings. And she was scary. She's always take care of her patients. She's very special. She's devoted to church and her books. She was gone. We have lost two of them. <laughs> SLE again is a condition that affects many systems, virtually every system in the body has been known to be attacked by SLE. Is lupus seen in Nigerians? Because there are people who say, no, we don't have it, oh, it's, uh, it's an Iboma's disease. The reality of it all is that lupus is very well seen. Lupus is an autoimmune disorder where the immune system attacks the organs of the body. It actually constitutes about 10% of cases we see in the rheumatology clinic. And um, many times, because it is off, it's missed, you know, there is the, the statement or there is that notion that it's rare, but it's not rare. Lupus in the body is like soldiers and police attacking and killing citizens in the same country. Let's join the fight to kick lupus out. While it affects women of child-bearing age, it may even affect babies of mothers with lupus. How does lupus present among us in Nigeria? Probably the commonest presentation is recurrent fever. And most of the time, the patient is diagnosed as malaria, typhoid, typhoid, malaria, on and on and on like that. And that goes on, can go on for several months. Now, accompany that, we find out that even when the patient is treated with malaria, with anti malaria, the malaria comes back. Then they can also present with multiple joint pains. Their pain, their joints are painful, joints of the fingers, and all over they are painful, and sometimes they are even swollen. Then they can present with extreme tiredness, fatigue. They wake up in the morning and they are so tired, they just don't want to do anything. Then they have marked weight loss, and oftentimes, because of their presentation, because of the long duration, oftentimes there's suspicion could this be tuberculosis or could this be HIV? What else would they present with? They present with various types of skin rashes. And a particularly common one, although we don't see this in, 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 in Nigeria commonly, is what they call malarash which arashes around the nostrils, between the, between the nostrils and the eye, what we call the butterfly area of the face. So they can present with rashes there, but they can present with actually any rashes on the body, different types of rashes on the body, especially, especially in areas exposed to sunlight. Yeah. Lupus in the body is like soldiers and police, attacking and killing citizens in the same country. Let's join hands and kick lupus out. And just like the lupus can affect the brain, it can affect any structure of the body. It can affect the kidneys and patients who present with evidence of kidney condition, sometimes even with a kidney failure. It can affect the lungs and they present with water in the lungs. Which you 
particular infection. They can affect the heart, in which they can also present with water covering the heart, which is called pericardial infection. And one particular presentation that we see is, in especially in young women, is that of recurrent pregnancy losses. And that's because even lupus can affect the womb and cause recurrent pregnancy losses, in which the person just loses pregnancy in about the 10 to 12 weeks recurrently without any life that in between. We have lost two of them. Join our hands to kick out lupus. If you learn lupus, you end lupus. Lupus is characterized by flares. A flare means an increase in the presentation of the lupus or admission because of certain complications. One human life is way too much significant to ignore. Let's not wait until many people are carried to the early grave by lupus before start kicking it out. We have developed various criteria for diagnosing lupus. Most of these criteria are domiciled among rheumatologists. And the three common ones that are being used is what you call the American College of Rheumatology Criteria, which is probably the most commonly used. But then you have another one called the SLICK Criteria, S-L-I-C-C. -C what is Systemic Lupus International Collaborative Clinics. And of recent, we have a new set of criteria which is by cooperation between the American College of Rheumatology, which is the body of rheumatologists in the America, in, in the US, and then the body of rheumatologists. With the new set of criteria, we able to pick up patients with lupus much earlier because the very premise of this criteria is the presence of the auto antibodies, the antibodies that are attacking the, the, the body, the antibodies in the blood, called antinuclear antibody. That is the basis of the, uh, of the diagnosis. Now, but the common tests we use for making the diagnosis are the hemoglobin or the PCO, which is usually low, uh, then the white blood cell counts, that is also usually low. Even, I mean, despite the fact that the patient is running a fever, the white blood cell count will be low, which shows that this is not an infection. And in many instances, when such patients are treated with different types of antibiotics, they don't get better because it is not an infection. And the white blood cell count is always surprisingly low. Then they can have what they call the platelets. These are also low. All these cells are low because the body is developing antibodies against them. But for the more specific tests, we look at the auto antibodies, the, the ammunition that, the, uh, that these white cells are using to attack the body. We look at them in the blood, and these are what you call auto antibodies. The major one is antinuclear antibody, which is significantly present, positive, in most patients with lupus, usually anything between 90 and 95 percent. Others are anti double stranded DNA, which is positive in less uh, number of patients. They have also anti Smith or anti SN, which is also significantly positive, but may not be as high as the antinuclear antibody. So the screening test is the antinuclear antibody. We also do the ESR, which is very high in these patients. As a matter of fact, when any general practitioner is faced with this confusion about a patient with these various complaints, I do the ESR and the ESR is very high then you must start investigating for lupus. Uh, 
it begins with you and I. Yes, we can do that. Let's kick it. Let's go. There are general measures that we advise. Uh, the first one is, of course, rest. Patients with lupus tend to get tired in the afternoon, and therefore they must have a little nap in the afternoon and then continue with whatever they're doing. The little nap actually gives them a word of good and they feel more invigorated and able to cook better. Rest is important, what else is important, they must eat good food. Balanced diet is very important because they need it to fight this onslaught by the white blood cells in the body. Then what else? You know, they must avoid sunlight. Sunlight striking on the skin tends to aggravate or precipitate a flare. So they must avoid sunlight. And we sometimes have to advise them to use what they call a sunscreen, which is a cream that covers the skin and prevents the uh, sunlight from hitting the skin. Uh, exercise is important, you know, as, as fast as, 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 um, as they can cope. But then there are drugs that we use, and there are quite a lot of drugs that we use, a lot. The mainstay of management of lupus is with steroids and anti -malinous. I know steroid has a bad name among many people, but that's a drug we use, prednisone. Then anti-malaria, especially hydroxychloroquine. If that's not available, use chloroquine. But hydroxychloroquine is less toxic to the body than chloroquine. What are the other drugs? When other organs or structures are involved, especially the kidneys, then we must up our kidney by using what we call immunosuppressives. And depending on the states, we can use immunosuppressives such as isotherapy, such as methotrexate, such as cyclosporin, tacrolimus, sacrophosphoride, and microphenolate graffiti. These are drugs that we use for various aspects of organ involvement in the course. Now, all these drugs should work well, but in cases where they don't work, we are resorting to a new class of drugs, which we call the biologists. And there are two of them that have been approved. One is called the toxinab. The other one is called belumimab. What do these drugs do? They are not chemicals. They are actually manufactured by biotechnology. What do these do? They end up depleting the body of the bad lymphocytes, the B lymphocytes that seem to be attacking the body. So they are what we call the B lymphocyte depleting. This is now like the ultimate you know, management of patients. There are other management strategies. We can give IV immunoglobulins, which would more pump the excess antibodies produced, or we can even subject the blood to some electromagnetic field, which called plasmapholysis. When we do this, we are actually try to remove the excess autoantibodies in the blood. So this, by far and large, is what constitutes lupus. To summarize, lupus is not rare, it's seen. Uh, fortunately, it affects women of childbearing and young girls. Uh, the good news, of course, is that it can be properly investigated and it can be properly managed. Thank you very much for listening and bye bye. Let's join hands together to kick out lupus. Lupus in the body is like soldiers and police attacking and killing citizens in the same country. Let's join the fight to kick lupus out. Let's join hands and kick lupus out.